Remember when I made that EV video? Well, I never really dropped it, and yesterday, I finally cracked it. And the only thing left was to fix sound, so I hopped on YouTube and looked for the best tutorial, and then I found this. And my heart sank. Today I set out to do something seemingly impossible. Build an electric truck in automation. But by electric, I don't mean that we mess around in automation until we get something that somewhat resembles an electric car. I mean a true electric car. And at this point, I was completely devastated. This had done it for me. Until I looked at the instructions in which he followed. And this forum post, well, it modifies the files so it resembles an electric car. So, I'm here to tell you that I have cracked it. I now know how to make an electric car with batteries and everything. Yes, an electric engine with a battery pack and battery level done in kilowatt hours. I have done it. It's going. Except for the fact that this one actually has uh, engine noise still. I never did actually fix that. Oh, on this car. So, are you ready to be a non-faker anymore? Well, here we go. But first, we have to make an electric car. And I don't know which body I want to do this with. Let's make it in an Econo box. A little 2.1 meter thing. This will be easy, steel. And we are going to choose ladder purely for the point of making it heavier to simulate the batteries. I have never really got around to looking at how to add weight to a car. Front transverse, doesn't really particularly matter what you do with the motor. I'm gonna say that it's probably gonna be a front motor. Why not? Double wishbone and semi-trailing arm in the rear to really get that cheap card <laughs> set down. Now, we're just gonna do a new engine. It really doesn't matter what you have. So don't even w uh, bother spending any time on it. Ow, apparently they said to not use a turbocharger. I didn't really particularly care. All you want to do though is just make sure that your engine doesn't knock uh, to avoid any issues. Actually, you know what? We're going to run some nice muffled things to uh, help reduce the noise. Now this does not matter at all, moving on. And it's an electric car, so it has to be the obligatory green, right? Yep. Good. Now, this is where you get to choose some things. You go front wheel drive. Now, they said to use dual clutch, but I did it with a manual. And I think I'm going to leave it with a manual. Doesn't matter how many gears, because you're going to remove them all anyway. And then you're going to pick this. I'm going to go with an electronic LSD, because that seems like something you would have in an electric car. You know what? No. Actually, open. Yeah. Open it is. Because this is a cheap Econo box. The only thing you'll want to do is set your top speed. Doesn't matter whether the car can reach it or not. That's just what you want to set. And I'm going to say that this thing probably tops out at about 170 was probably a good number for an electric car like this, though that's probably even too fast. Tires are an important choice. I'm going to go with a hard long life. Once again, cheap car. Want to keep it quite cheap. And you know what? They don't need to be big tires. They're actually going to be quite narrow. But then we're going to offset it quite a lot. I love me some offset. And I'm going to, oh, you know what? I would go cheap seats. Well, we do want that weight to be up, so we're going to go with that and we're going to stick something like premium in there just for the extra weight. Electric power steering, because you won't really run hydraulic for this. Then ABS and traction control, probably some sort of electronic stability control. Oh, no, we're going cheap. So traction and ABS will be about it. Then for safety, we're going to chuck on some quite advanced stuff just for the extra weight. Some standard springs, gas monotube, and passive. Okay, and as I said, this doesn't matter. Moving on, fixtures. Now it's time to make this look like a true EV. That's the front done, right? And here we have our new EV. I went with the same old uh, company name as the previous one, so this is called the Crazy Old Guy, and uh, we've given it the name The City. It's quite a small car. It's a little bit sporty in its design, but it is still done with keeping in mind that it is still a very cheap car. What is that line, right? What is this? What the hell? I didn't notice that before. Anyway, moving on, I suppose. But yeah, we've gone with the Tesla very closed front end kind of style look. I do kind of like it. It also looks a little bit weird, but 
That's why I kept mine looking weird, so then it's like the original. So now all we've got to do is hop into the coding and make this thing a little bit more like an actual real electric car. Well, I say make like, it is actually going to be a full electric, registering as electric and using electricity. We'll come into focus at some point, I swear. Well, I lied. Uh, moving on! So you're going to want to find your way to the documents, BeamNG and mods folder. And under here, you're going to have the car that you've made. I was about to call it the CBM City Zip, but no. It's the zip file of your car. Then we go into vehicles, go into your vehicle, then under engine. Now I open mine up with Microsoft Visual Studio. Now you can change this if you want. So this I'll just call electric motor. And in here, you're going to want to add this line of text, which will be Casmo fuel tank, which will tell it that there's a slot that can be filled and it's going to have a battery pack. Under combustion engine though, this is going to change to electric motor. The rest of this could stay the same. Now, this is something which you can change individually. I'm just going to skip this thing up for say 200 torques, which is just me, you know what, 250. So we're going to start at about 150 and then by 500 RPM, we're going to have the full 250 torque. Then we're going to delete everything all the way to about 6,000 RPM. Oh, wow. I don't have the RPM set, but that's fine. All the way to about 6,000 RPM. It doesn't really matter what you do. You can tune it specifically for your car. Then it's going to be another... 250, so it's got a very flat torque line. Then I'm gonna add one more line here. And instead of 6,000 RPM, we're gonna change the red line to about, say, 13,000 RPM. And we're gonna down this number to about 20. So as it starts getting beyond 6,000 RPM, it starts to taper off quite a lot. Now we're gonna come down here to where it says lev limit uh, rev limiter, the idle RPM. And we're going to select them and remove it because it doesn't really matter and we're going to change this now when you change it i just followed the other guy's instruction which is just the maximum rpm you've got here plus 100 rpm just so then it can over rev a little bit now i don't remember what these numbers do but i remember it working a lot better when you change it this to two and friction to four so a lower friction should allow it to not drop rpms quite so quickly then dynamic friction i've got set to 0 0.0005 now, not much of this matters here. Change this to zero, zero. That's fine. I never really bothered with this, never bothered with this. We kept on going all the way down and then we've got main tank. And we're gonna change this to main battery. Then required energy type is going to be battery, which I don't quite understand. You think it'd be electricity, but whatever. So burn efficiency, I get the feeling is quite important here but I haven't bothered to fiddle with this much with any really good results, so I'm gonna leave that for what it is. You probably could change this, but I don't know how to. The top speed limit is something that you're going to want to fiddle with if you're having top speed problems. Sound configuration, you can either just completely delete or do what I do, which is set this to like minus 100. So there will be a little bit of sound, but you won't hear really anything from the engine. But you still get wind noise, which makes it sound like it's still moving. So you can just go ahead and delete that if you want to. Wait, hold on. You have to delete this as well. So if you were to delete this, you have to get the sound kick fig, this bracket here, which takes it all the way down to this bracket, and that has to be removed all in one go. If you don't know which one of these brackets to delete and you have something like Microsoft Visual Studio, you just click on this and it'll highlight the other bracket that it's related to. So you click here, this one's highlighted. You click here, and another one is highlighted up above. Click here, and boop, there you go. So you just delete all of this. I don't know much about changing this stuff either, but we are gonna go here to gear ratios. And we're going to get rid of most of this. I'm gonna set this to 3.65, comma, zero, comma, and three. I would like to get rid of clutch, but I don't entirely know how to. I am going to set this, however, to one. And the clutch launch target RPM will also be one. Transmission delay will be 
eh, quite low. And the rest of this I really don't know how it works, so I'm just going to leave it as is. Now, down to the fuel tank area. This is where your battery information will be supplanted. And we're just gonna delete that. So, you want to select this bracket, because this bracket is the important one. And that says, hey, this is the bracket that's attached. And we're going to delete that. Now we're gonna hit save. And if you're using the same software that I am, you're going to hit yes, I do want to update it. Now here we've got a modified JBeam file, which I grabbed from another BeamNG thing. And I've just modified it a little bit. The link will be down in the description for this. It basically just adds a 50, 50? A 50 kilowatt hour battery pack. You've got values here. You've got a whole bunch of stuff, which I don't quite really understand. You've got electricity, electricity, electricity energy, or electric energy. You got your battery capacity here, and then a whole bunch of stuff I don't understand. Moving on. So what you're gonna wanna do with this file, which I'm going to share with you, it doesn't need to be anywhere in particular. What you need to do is drag it in here or paste it in here, and then you're going to update it. Now launch BeamNG. Then you're going to want to bring up the car that you've made and see that we now have electric set here and we have our power talk. So it starts off really low, but really quickly gets up there and then it starts to go down. Now, a lot of depictions of electric motors say that it has its full power from the minimum, but there are a few problems with that, especially with a lot of cheaper motors. And I'll go into it a little bit later, but that is quite accurate. But here you'll notice you have no fuel in the tank. That's when you go over here to vehicle config, do this drop down, put this here, and 50 kilowatt hour battery pack. Oh baby. And guess what? You now have an electric car. And I'm not quite sure if I've set my RPM right. <laughs> hey! Well, that's something that we can go back and fiddle with because this is... Yeah, I think I need to change my final drive ratio because this is quite a short final drive ratio that we've uh, given ourselves here. But we do actually have a fun little bit of a car. And I mean, I've made a quite soft suspension but it's not really that bad. And it really does make me happy that I'm able to do this and able to bring it to you guys. I hope you enjoy this. Uh, I'm gonna quickly go fiddle with the final drive ratios and see what we got. You know what, actually I've changed my mind. Instead of doing it this way, we're gonna set this to say 20,000 RPM will be its limit. So we set this to 20,000 here. Save it repack it, relaunch it. Sometimes when you first place your car and you have this graph up, it'll still show the previous car stuff here. Don't be too concerned. Once you go in here and place this battery, it should work perfectly. Now, we have a much higher top speed. Let's give it a bit of a roar. Now, I could have changed the drive ratio as opposed to changing the RPM that we have, but we're gonna see if that was a good choice or not. And we are slowing down quite a lot at about 230-ish. The wind resistance is doing the job we want, and 20,000 RPM is not really unrealistic for this sort of engine. And I hope you guys really did enjoy this. This is now kind of the end of the instructional part. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of a hot lap now. So if you're done watching this video, that's fine. Please drop a like, that'd be great. But we're gonna go to the automation test track and see how this bad boy does with a not a very high top speed <sighs> now to give you an idea of the friction stuff that we've set have a look at this rpm drop that rpm drop is very slow you're getting next to no drag from the engine and if you want to simulate engine brake uh, the like sorry regenerative braking i haven't tried that yet so that may be up to you but currently this thing just nice and coast, which is a very normal generic thing to do. You're also going to notice that the battery charge drops quite quickly. I think that might have to do with the burn efficiency and also the fact that a 50 kilowatt hour battery pack is not that big and I was flooring it. But if you want to see what it's like for a real car to drain a battery really quickly, I just want to show you this car and how it drains. Now this thing is very powerful. As you can see, it starts off at 898 newton meters of torque. And it looks like it goes to about a thousand horsepower, so yeah. You're about to see this thing sucked down. Look, the battery is already changing. Now, I never really finished tweaking this car. I just wanted to go ahead and try to replicate the results here a few times. I did that. 
and then I went ahead and made this video to make sure that everything was working fine. And you can just see that that <laughs> battery pack is just sucking down the power. But uh, yeah, we're not racing this one. This one is all good. I also, yeah, didn't do the sound on this one, as I said. And let's do, oh, wait, hold on, stun that again. My bad. Okay. Oh, wow, we can really get that RPM risen up there. Oh, oh dear. That's a lot of smoke. And I am going to leave the power graph up there because I just love showing off the fact that this thing is fully electric. And just take a bit of a second to listen to what this sounds like. Well, now you're just hearing lots of tires squealing. Let's wait until we get around the corner first, because we do want to hear a little bit of this. That is pretty awesome. That is the sound of a very, very quiet electric car. And we're going to come around here. You know what we didn't do? We didn't check at 0 to 100. Maybe we'll do that at the end of this lap. Uh... I, I, I want to do so much with electric cars. I have a build-off that I want to do with my friends. I want to get them all on here. And we're going to create like that uh, old 70s cheese wedge car. We're going to make electric versions of that. We're going to have exactly the same engine, but try to make the cars as cheap as possible for that. That one, I reckon, is going to be very fun. But right now, let's just give a listen. That's the sound of nature. You can just hear the lithium mines destroying the environment. It's so quiet, so good for the environment. Well, I went through there at 140. That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, this thing does kind of just reach that top thing and then it just runs out of power, which is why I set it to such a low power out there as opposed to trying to limit it any other way. Because that's kind of how the electric motors go. They just start... Uh, they do have an optimal... Uh, RPM that they run at and once it gets beyond there the thing just starts to lose a little bit of power it comes down to how the engine is tuned and the way in which it's designed now what's the braking distance going to be here oh a lot longer than what I thought oh no oh don't worry guys we can still finish the lap this thing is barely damaged that's the good thing about these econo cars they're really cheap to have a fix wow this thing really doesn't feel like it has much damage at all. Like, it feels a little bit sloppy when I'm turning left now. But, I mean, it wasn't great beforehand. I think this thing is done really well in its accident. You know what it is? It's probably that extra safety I added. You know what? We might do a little bit of a test of that at some point. See if safety improves our ability to withstand an accident. Oh. If there's actually a bearing of a result of changing our safety... That would be huge. And look at our battery pack. Now, we have been flooring it. So it's not really a real world... Uh, what would you call it? Experiment? Oh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, get slowed. Woo that was close. We almost didn't make that. But this car is heavy. And it is a little micro-econo car. So you don't really expect a whole lot more than that. And we've done a 303 with a pretty major accident. Yowza! Oh boy! That looks like it hurt. But uh, yeah, let's uh, give this thing its 0 to 100 run through. Now, does this work? Uh, oh good, it's gonna give us a 0 to 100. What does it do? To 100. Come on, show me a number. And 7.5 seconds. You know what? That's actually really, really fast for a cheap electric car. And that makes me happy. We've done quite well. It's what you'd expect. I want to give another quick little test without ESC on. See if that changes anything. And floor it. Come on. We're oh, getting a lot of burnout here. But we're getting there. And 100. Okay, you know what? That was actually slower. 8.75. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We've got the little charging thing on the front there, which I shot, uh, forgot to show you as well. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed it. It took forever to make. And I will catch you next time. When I'm laying the smack down on, say, maybe another YouTuber. We shall see. Bye! Oh wait, before I go, I forgot to mention why there's a little bit of a dip there. So, a lot of electric motors that are cheaper will have a really heavy, uh, what's it called? A stator? Like, the, the part in the middle. I really don't mind, no 
my uh, terminology when it comes to electric motors. The other thing is running the maximum voltage through uh, the motor controller suddenly and really, really abruptly can cause really big lots of overheating. So you have two options. Run a really expensive motor controller, say like Tesla, or run a cheap one and then just make it ramp up the voltage slowly, which is quite common with old lead acid ones and is still kind of used for more modern cheap electric motors. And that's kind of what I was going for here. But yeah, all right, well, let's continue on with saying goodbye. Bye.